This is the start of my tiny house. A satellite dish turned on its end, forming the roof. Some cement blocks holding it up off the ground, and a metal door just propped there to keep some of the wind off. Humble beginnings, but could be better. This is a um, gonna be a little hunting area, I guess. But underneath here, I'm gonna put my plow to keep it out of the weather. And this construction is typical mole man stacking blocks, right? So there's no mortar in any of these joints. They're just stacked together. Now he does a much better job than I do. Um, but this is pretty decent and um, he's got some walls that are painted painted 20 30 years ago and the paint's not cracking so i suppose that is um, better than most cement block walls that we see with mortar in them that don't last you know five years before they're cracking but one of the secrets to it is making sure that all of your blocks are absolutely straight and level. So they're gonna be leveled this way and they're gonna be leveled this way. And that allows that weight of the building to just push down directly on those blocks and it just locks them all together. And at the bottom, where you might find a foundation, I've got a two by eight. Now, Mole Man, he would use a six by six and he'd use these six inch blocks. Um, but uh, number one, I don't have a six by six and number two, I don't have that many six inch blocks. So this is gonna have to do well enough for what I'm doing here. Right now I've got the platform up where I'm going to start putting uh, walls after this and um, the weight of that will keep all of those blocks in place. Now he normally does uh, plank style houses. So he will have a plank, a plank, a plank and they will all be joined together to form one continuous and solid piece of wood that's basically an inch and a half thick and arbitrarily wide. Now this is a pretty small building, it's only about 8 by 8, a little less. Um, and so that takes a huge amount of materials, which he has. I don't have that much. So mine is going to be stud walls put on top of this deck. Um, but this end is beefed up quite a bit. I've got two 2x8s two side by side here and then the 2x8 joists going that way so they all run down there and then across the middle I've got a little bracing in there even though it's only 8 feet. Uh, I just want to make sure it's pretty tight uh, because I'm you know building on these blocks that are just stacked here so weight is doing me some good and um, you know it's that is going to help everything lock together I've also got a 2 by 12 right there on the end which is going to lock those together as well so because I have that big span in the front where there is no support I want to make sure I have much more support you know in the horizontal so that doesn't sag or anything and then when I put my walls up I may put a couple two by sixes here kind of plank style or only horizontal rather than vertical and uh, I got plastic on there right now because that's just how it goes it rains whenever you get to well the thing is it takes much longer than you think ever um, but we'll have some more videos about this this is 
one of the windows I got to put in it or a part of a window that actually came from a full-size commercial style window this window is six feet something tall and four feet wide so once I get that in that's gonna take a good bit of wall space up in there and then this other one will go across another wall but one of the reasons I'm choosing these materials and these methods is because I know the methods and uh, I have the materials so all of this material was reclaimed from a mobile home converted into a classroom so all these two baits come from that all the two befores that I'll use for the walls and the ceiling or the rafters came from that this plywood I did buy I used that for scaffolding on the $500 shed but so far with some brand new rolled roofing and some other hardware I got to put this together I've spent about a hundred dollars on it I kind of wanted to do it for nothing but uh, I guess they say nothing's for free but I'm trying to keep this really really on low budget for this project All of it or just one? one. Okay, we're gonna put a rope around it or something to lift it up. Whoa, 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 back up. Okay, I gotta get a rope around it. I'm gonna get a rope around it. Uh, back up some more. All right, we're gonna lift these up and put them out on the deck. And uh, hopefully it's gonna work swimmingly. We'll see how it goes. He's lifting the wall. And he's going to put it on the side of the deer blind, otherwise known as my grandchildren's playhouse. You want me to turn the video off? Huh? Should I cut the video? So the first one's up there. I just need to position it and then nail it down. I'll go get some nails now. Alright. I'm uh, getting ready to put roofing on. And generally, you don't put on roofing in the driveway, but... Um, this is rolled roofing and I want to have it done in the sun 
the other thing is the roof is not on the building yet and I'm gonna lift it up with that uh, Bobcat lifter whatever you call it <laughs> the nose is what I call it and so I've also renamed this building to be the lake house so it sounds more uppity and everything um, and when I got ready to do this I could not find a trowel or anything to put this stupid thing on with so I got a spoon and a knife uh, to put that on with there's a bucket of tar and what I want to do is put tar around three corners of that thing so that we'll seal down on the bottom and you only nail it at the top so I also have a propane tank here and a, and a I don't know what you call that thing a torch that I can use to heat things up because you want it to seal down to that plywood it'll overlap the edges and I'm hoping that I can do all of this um, before I put the roof up on the top of the building if not it's going to be a kind of a mess I think but um, if I can then it will save me a bunch of time and effort uh, up on the top of the roof where you know it's November now so I've got everything laid out in the Sun so that I can get as much heat as I can out of it but um, you kind of need some heat to make roofing work well if you do it in the winter time it's not always that great um, oh I did find a little trowel I may use this instead I know you're thinking hey what's going on with that well there's my little trowel but don't worry my wife doesn't watch my YouTube channel anyway so she'll never know I was gonna use that spoon and knife for uh, putting tar on the roof anyway um, but we'll check back later and see how it's going. I got the second half of the roof covered on the lower half and I cut an extra piece of um, roofing for the top. Now I was kind of hoping that um, I'd be able to use one piece and go over and connect to the other side, but that's not even going to be close. So I am going to need that second roll of roofing I bought, which is kind of what I thought. But, you know, you can hope. There's a hole I've cut for the chimney, and I'll be flashing that once we get up there. But it is incredibly hard to get this uh, roof up where it needs to go. You know, with my little snorkel thing there, I've got to disconnect it from the snorkel. At least I did the last piece. I've got to dis disconnect it from there to min finish taking it up the, the rest of the way. Now, I'm not reefing, reefing it around myself, but I'll come around and get a point in the middle here and lift that up to push it over the top. But it does take a lot of time as I'm working all by myself have to go up adjust it come down lift it go up adjust it uh, it's kind of time-consuming so I gotta get going thanks all right here I am out of the lake house and I'm trying to put that second half of the roof up you can see the first half of the roof up there it's a little kitty corner right now uh, but as you might imagine it's mm, impossible for one person to do that uh, much lifting by themselves but the good thing is I have my little nose uh, on the Bobcat that's oh, a New Holland LS160 anyway that is going to help me get that up I'm going to secure a, uh, some straps on it and one of the tricks that I found out on that first piece is that I've got to get the weight off of those nose chains so that I can suspend it and once I suspend it I'll come around the end and hopefully 
there's a way to stick my nose in there somewhere and push it up the rest of the way. But that is quite the task, even with hydraulics, to do by yourself. So there it is so far. I got the door in. It's coming along pretty good, but getting that roof up is going to be the biscuit. Okay, here's the weakness of the system. If you don't lift that right in the middle, when you've got those all unhooked and everything, it falls down. <laughs> and with all these trees right here, I don't know that I can get it exactly in the middle. So at least I've got a couple straps up there um, to keep it from falling back down. But what might happen is that I go up, I tighten the straps, I come down, I lift the nose, I go back up, I tighten the straps, and so on until it's up there, or close to being up there, and then we'll figure something out from there. But it, uh, it's a lot of uh, on the bobcat, off the bobcat, up and down to get this job done. All right, we got a mid-November snow storm. You kind of have to take what you can get around here. But uh, you can see that it's a little bit on the doorway there and on the steps. Uh, pretty neat. I haven't got it completely closed in yet. But uh, we'll be working on that today to get some of that upper part in, some of the windows in, hopefully all the windows in, the doorknob on, the soffit done, just a lot of different things that I'd like to get done today, but we'll see how that goes. I got the gable end kind of blocked in there pretty good. Still got some weights up on top of the roof. I don't know if you can see that cement block up there holding down where I had that um, ridge. Whoa, that is slippery. I may not go up those steps just yet. Um, but anyway, that's what I got to do. Get some of this OSB cut up. Find the level around where I want it to go. I may do this side sloped and that side level I don't know that might be goofy uh, but close those eaves up somehow and there's a table saw in there so I can get that out and start working on that still got a couple pipe clamps up there I don't know if you can see them real well that one has got a little orange thing on it but I clamped that 2x6 down to the top there to give it some more support along that edge since I didn't have a double plate there or anything I stuck that in there to kind of transfer the load uh, a little better right up there at the top that's where the window is going to go and then underneath it there'll be a space to look out and so on uh, so got some work cut out for me today but I am certainly happy to have that roof up there especially since that roof has snow on it that is awesome well more to come stay tuned all right I got that window in and these are commercial windows so they're pretty heavy uh, and got some hefty aluminum around them that one is my high window not really meant for seeing out per se there'll be a, a port underneath it for looking out uh, more regularly and this one I was going to show you how I got them up there so this one I got on this side it's a full length one I didn't take it apart in the middle so you can see those ratchet straps and uh, they're just inching their way up there till I get it up and into the opening uh, the reason I didn't use the bobcat is a I'm all by myself so I can't control it real well and B this will keep from damaging anything and um, we'll get it up in, in there eventually 
All right, it's in. Uh, maybe I'll break for lunch, but um, I don't know if I'll be able to get a two or four underneath this thing or not. Uh, I got a little piece of cherry under there right now, filling up that gap. It's not quite a full two before, but we will figure that out and get that baby secured in there. Once this is secured, this will make the whole side of that done and make it start looking like a building once I get the windows in or the I don't know what you call those they, they are windows um, but the sash is in windows coming next or maybe not I don't know uh, and then maybe a piece of uh, OSB on the other side I think there's a piece around here somewhere that I used <laughs> Oh, it's on the other side. Yeah, I got that one on the other side uh, That I'll put up next that one right there Is gonna go across the top up there and I haven't quite decided how I'm gonna do everything yet the pieces I got won't go halfway across so I'm gonna have to figure some math out or something how to do that and then of course seal up the ends and such But still plenty to do. I'm not gonna run out of work today All right This is the gable end of the little house The lake house, I guess you call it And I'm working on that little piece of the soffit right there And I got a make a little piece to fill that in now I'm using the lift with a ladder up like that I don't like that so well it's not as secure usually I like to do it this way with the regular step ladder and then climb into the bucket from there uh, but most of the time I've climbed up that once but most of the time I'm going on and off climbing across the bobcat to get up in there uh, but this is going to be the closing up to the soffits. I got all the sub um, siding on. Still got to cut off a little on this corner right there. And then these little holes in various places, those are going to be uh, windows. And I just finishing up that one piece on the soffit and then I got to continue on the rest of the way over and then do this end get that all boxed in and then button that up and I think once that's done it'll be you know other than putting these little windows in which are going to be little sliding plexiglass things um, then it will be on to the interior where I need to get in there and start doing some major work but this will make it more or less closed in and we're ready to go to the next step all right this is uh, what I'm using for insulation. It's uh, like the stuff that goes in quilts uh, because I got it for free, right? So that will keep the cost down. But the the problem is it's only like an eighth of an inch thick. It's not very thick. So I've got to fold it up in order to get it fit into the spot. If I cut it the right length then uh, it will go in easier and fold up easier let me show you what that's like over here so this is my cutting station now if this was a windy day this would not be a job for a windy day but today I roll it out and then I want to cut it off at 135 inches so get that cut off at 135 and then cut across there with the scissors and then I fold it four times this way and essentially three times crossways so it's half 
quarter uh, and then this way would go one two so there'd be two folds going this way and that pretty much fills up that space well and if you get it um, sized correctly it'll fit into that space pretty good and stay there kind of like real insulation does and um, the, the trick is to get enough layers that it's still going to provide insulating value folding it up so I don't have to cut it a hundred times and then getting it all stuffed into those bays one at a time and then I can put the uh, the walls on so let's get to it just a little more on the technique of putting this uh, vinyl siding up my wife was sort of amazed that I knew how to do this <laughs> although it's probably one of the easiest things in construction uh, the first thing is you put that starter strip down and what that starter strip is for is to hold that first course on and then you just clip each piece underneath the one on top it has a little groove in there and a little hook on the bottom that hook slides into the groove and clips on now up there I can see I've made a mistake and sort of have those coming down you may not be able to see it real well but I may have to take a couple of those down and adjust them so that they're running straight across because that top one kind of slants down more on that end and they can't have that it's got to run across there straight and you can use a level on every one to make sure you get them uh, straight across there but uh, it's a little bit of overkill in any case uh, the the idea is that every joint is going to hide something like these corners hide all the ends of this because that's just a thin piece of vinyl that goes across there and gives you the illusion that you're actually looking at siding but you're not so that little channel hides them protects them from getting you know water and stuff infiltrating from that side and these pieces these corner pieces uh, they're super expensive if you ask me like 30 bucks and I got these that were damaged I got them for 13 bucks a piece but uh, still that's pretty pretty expensive for one little piece of plastic but it hides all of the end uh, parts of that um, vinyl and you can see if you didn't have it you'd have little holes like that and I've got to put something up there to cover up those holes when I make that window and on that window up there I have trim going all the way around it, little J channel. You got to put that around the window first, and then when you put your uh, siding up to it, it will slip under that uh, outside vinyl so that water doesn't get behind it again. It's all just a matter of, you know, keeping water out from where you don't want it, basically not real hard to figure out the other kind of uh, trick that may be less known is that when you put the nails in to all those little slots you'll be using shingle nails to nail these up and you'll put them through those little slots and that slot allows that piece to move if this vinyl expands or contracts so you don't want to smash down on those nail heads hard and then even though they have a slot they can't move anyway they can get kind of wavy and look ugly and I suppose they could even potentially break that little oval piece out and then it could start coming undone if if it was bad enough I suppose but generally you want to keep them sort of loose on the side of the building there and uh, that will give you some 
good looking but relatively sloppy <laughs> uh, construction because the ends I've cut them pretty straight but once they get stuck in there you really can't see what they look like and this stuff there's several ways to cut this I don't know if I went over this in the last video you can cut them with tin snips or uh, saw blades if you uh, cut them with a saw blade they can splinter a lot so you want to use a plywood blade and then turn it backwards so it's more of a grinding uh, thing than a cutting thing uh, but anyway that's kind of a lot on that but uh, that's kind of how you put up vinyl siding uh, this is the uh, furnace for the lake house and uh, just a few things about this one is I took out th this is actually a gas water heater 40 or 50 gallon I think and uh, to convert it to a word burning I basically just cut a hole in the side put a hinge on it so it could open and close welded up a little handle on there and then started closing up some of the holes you know for pipes and things that were into there I've still got to deal with this uh, but a little bit more about that is that um, my dad was real worried that there would be little cracks in here that sparks would jump out of and catch the place on fire so I put these guards all the way around but I think in thinking of it it's really probably some kind of match mechanism on here to hold that tight so that if something falls on the inside it doesn't whack against the inside of the door and it just swings open so I'll be working on this to put some kind of mechanism in there to uh, securely fasten this so it doesn't unexpectedly open not that I'll probably be sleeping with it burning out there but I suppose it could happen so the first thing I did when I got this is I opened it up and then I cut the pipe in there and a real hard job and an ugly job of hacking that pipe out and that pipe is really the exhaust pipe for so there would be a burner at the bottom and that burner would have the hot gases passing up through the middle of the water to heat it up and then vent out the top so I basically converted the entire water part into a place that holds wood and smoke <clears throat> and that's why I didn't worry too much about getting that um, gear up to make it a little more efficient but then in order to close the bottom up I cut that part out and then put a little plate steel down there to uh, make that a little more airtight so the vent will only be through the little holes and imperfections that go in there and then I'll stand it up put a little fire in it hook this up to the chimney although that's a pretty small chimney uh, but I don't you know I don't plan on heating a lot of space and I don't plan on building a big fire in there mostly just a little smoky fire probably to uh, warm it up a little bit inside there if it gets real so the uh, sort of hack together um, hot water heater wood stove and you see this big glob of weld up here this tank had a hole in it and I just sort of gobbed enough welding in there to uh, fill it up again not a great welder but I'm persistent enough to get the job done so I think that a little more work on this get that little um, latch going down there and it should be good to go I'll probably put it up on some cement blocks or something to keep it off of direct contact with the floor but it does have a little concave section down at the bottom which keeps the fire up 
uh, off of direct contact with whatever it's sitting on. We'll see if that works out. You know, everything is experiment. You know, if it makes the floor smoke, that's no good. Um, more later. I got the uh, heater, it's actually a hot water heater, installed into the tiny house now, and it's uh, it's running. We have a little fire in there. Now, generally the fire in here is going to be pretty small, and uh, oh, I So you can see that it's not a roaring fire in there, but it is going, and um, it's mid 30s out, I guess. And in here it is, oh, probably 50 or 60. Anyway, so still got a lot of work to do, but I do have some of those windows in. I um, can't remember if I actually showed much of that before, but I got those flashed around and um, the plexiglass is in there so you can slide them open and close them. I poked up a few places some little stuffies to keep some of the draft out but it's kind of windy today so that's uh, that's it for that kind of uh, the story on this is that this is again just pieces I found and that chimney is the jacket of the water heater took the jacket off the insulation off and then rolled it up and stuffed it up through that hole and the in the roof to get the exhaust out and just held together with little pieces of wire for right now I may or may not do something fancier than that but that seems to keep it together keeps the smoke going up the chimney and so on so we're just finishing up putting the flooring on the walls in here and once you get into the peak part, well, of course, all the boards have to be cut. And I'm trying to do this pretty uh, sloppy, easy. I don't know what you want to say. But uh, the only thing I'm going to nail to is actually in the middle. The ends are just going to be held in with the tongues. And you can see we stuffed the ends with uh, insulation apart from our uh, batting. And then this piece is cut on an angle on each side. We'll get it in there, get those pieces down on the tongue, and then when I get that situated in there, then I can just nail it in. We got one, maybe two more pieces to put in on the end, and that'll wrap the inside up. The only thing left is the outside. There's a view out on the, the pond from the lake house that uh, I think this is gonna be the last I'll do of this we built a bed last night slept out here and had a mighty fine night but I thought I'd give a kind of an overview of what's left uh, just in case you care but the uh, the interior is done-ish, I suppose. I got the coat rack up and everything. All the windows slide in and out. I built a um, wood rack this morning so I can put my wood there. Now this uh, this bed takes up about, uh, I don't know, 40-50% of the available resources or the re real estate in this situation 
and about 90% of the usable space because the door is going to swing open there. So I'm hoping that we can take up that bottom bed and put a chair in there so that then two people can can sit in here and look out and do all our looking. The heater worked phenomenally well. It was quite warm in here. Of course, when you're only, I don't know, 12 inches from the fire box, that's pretty good. You want to keep a low fire just in case. Uh, let's go out and take a look at the outside and see what's left to do out there. Uh, this is Byron. He's my helper today. Hello. Oh. So this side, I still got to put uh, rolled roofing just on the little bits that are exposed there. And um, the sides and the ends are pretty much finished with the uh, vinyl siding. I still need to put a J channel up there uh, to help, you know, finish that off. And then a finishing strip on the other end. But I kind of wanted to go over a couple things. This J channel around the windows is not only decorative, it hides the end of that piece of vinyl there, but it also directs the water out over it. And you can do that a couple ways. The more common way is to make a little tongue on this and then cut a notch in this one so that that one sets down in there directs the water out around it and it'll come back out on top of there and then the flashing I kind of did the, my own style of flashing on the bottom here to get that water out away from uh, everywhere it's not supposed to be and then this side has got just one more row I need to do up under the eaves and I'll probably end up painting the eaves as well this little w window here, this is a uh, my uh, tilt out window, and I still need to shave a little bit off of the plastic here so that it doesn't creak and groan, and potentially put another piece of flashing in this section to direct that water up and out and over and out, so that water goes on the outside and not on the inside. this end I think I've shown this before I still got about the same amount to do up there with the window and everything this section down here I want to make this uh, a door so that I can open it up on the plow so I can more easily get the plow in and out of there and what I've heard is that um, here, want to grab that for me? Sure. There's a bike trail, I don't know, 300 yards from here. And um, I heard that they're building a bike trail from like Washington State to Vermont or somewhere on the East Coast. And it may be going right past there. Uh, you really can't see it from here other than. Uh, I know where it is, so I know where it is. Uh, I can tell you where it is, but it's a little hard to find. And I do have a little path through there, so maybe I'll have visitors someday. But I wanted to, if you made it this far in the video, I wanted to kind of explain to you how the financing of this building went. So these blocks um, came from a, most of them anyway, came from a uh, foundation of a mobile home. So when they put the mobile home, they stacked these blocks up without any mortar. They stacked them up under the, uh, the trailers and kept it off the ground. And that's what I used for all of the, the blocks. So those were free. To me, I didn't have to pay for them. This piece of plywood, I don't even know where I got that. I've had that around so long. It doesn't. I, 
all recollection of buying it, if I did buy it, and I probably didn't, is gone. The windows, this big window, and then the small window, that's actually the top half of one of those windows. I got those for free. They were in the trash. Um, all of this wood that is uh, flooring, I got that for free. Somebody was cleaning out their uh, storage unit and giving away a bunch of this. And I got a lot of that. So that all went in there and up the walls and everything. The wainscoting. here. I bought those on clearance somewhere. I bought some of the J-channel, although I, I'm hoping to get the rest of it for free. Somebody's got some left over. I bought two of the corner pieces. These are pretty expensive, but you can see that one's got a little damage on it. They were damaged, so I got them half price. So I paid 30 bucks for the pair of them. The the door I got from some return. Somebody custom ordered it and then didn't want it. So they returned it to the store and I bought that. That was my most expensive item. I got that for uh, 150 bucks. So of all the things I've bought, the total rece receipts on everything came to less than $250. So I'm not saying you can do this, but I think you can if you're clever and you know you keep your eyes open, put a little sweat equity into it, and you can have yourself a nice tiny house, lake optional. Um, but you know, enjoy, be out here, do some fun stuff, and uh, subscribe, like, and all that great stuff. Thanks.